exactly 40 years ago, I entered the gates of this institution wanting to become a doctor. But it was in my sixth semester in early 85 that I went to Bhopal as a relief volunteer where a toxic industrial gas leak, as you might have all known, had resulted in much misery. And while being part of medical relief work, I learned how important it is to be technically competent in lung and heart diseases as was required there. In being able to, uh, you know, understand the frugal use of medical technology. But and also that the fact the health of the people is determined so politically. I learned it in practice what Bertolt Brecht, the famous uh, German dramatist wrote, warned us about never being politically naive even if I was training to be a mere doctor. So among the various things that I learned over the years about the art and science of healthcare here, as well as about its sociology, economics and politics, most of all I learned how to think and solve problems and take decisions. That is the legacy for, of AIMS for me. And my decisions took me to one of the poorest parts of the country in Chhattisgarh where I work. Surely enough, uh, managing tuberculosis among, amid pervasive hunger was one of the biggest healthcare challenges that I faced and I continue to face. I recall struggling to offer the right treatment to a 34 year old Adivasi man, Dhanga Baiga as his name was, who weighed all of 31 kilograms. Yes, 31 kilograms, which was what my 10 year old daughter then weighed when uh, then when he sought treatment for one of his uh, for his problems at one of our outreach clinics. We confirmed the presence of tuberculosis disease on a, on a sputum check. And then what doses of antibiotics for his tuberculosis should I give? Should I treat him with doses for an adult prescribed by the national program? Or should I reduce the doses given his body weight of 31 kilos? How do I ensure food for him while he takes time to recover enough to start working again? How do I protect his two-year-old daughter from contracting tuberculosis from him or for that matter his elderly mother? Should I petition the government to ensure food for all people with tuberculosis or is that not a job of a doctor? Should I spend time in lobbying with the Central TB Division in Delhi to make treatment guidelines for those who have additionally severe nutrition, undernutrition besides the tuberculosis that they have? These were several questions that came up when I was working as a, as a physician. Building on what I had learned at the medical school, I acquired additional skills on the go and also trained my community health workers to be able to look after over 500 new tuberculosis patients each year, among other big illnesses that people suffered here in rural Chhattisgarh. A few years later, we could get the state and the central government to include provisions for extra food for all TB patients. Tuberculosis was yet only one of the several illnesses that Adivasis and other marginalized communities in central India had been facing due to what is called as historical injustice even by the Supreme Court of India that they had suffered at the hands of the dominant society like, like ours. Falciparum malaria, leprosy, severe pneumonias and cholera, heart diseases of all types and not just ischemic uh, heart disease, mental illnesses, cancers, surgical problems big and small, obstetric emergencies and infertility at the same time, snakes and rabid animal bites and scorpion stings were seen in numbers and complexity that would put it to any big city hospital, medical college to shame, even, even the AIMS. And but we, we, you know, we soon learned this myth that people in small places like reed villages did not have, you know, they had small problems. You know? And this was a myth that we exploded and this required a simplistic set of healthcare services. That was the myth that was going around, but we sort of questioned it. And this marginalization of, you know, rural people's health problems, as well as their trivialization of their, their problems needed to be fought against. And we, so we did, we continue to identify the problems and then try to find solutions to the technical and operational issues plaguing these illnesses and document what we have been doing and sharing those in medical and lay journals. But above all, we started taking sides with the people in their struggle to get their due. As, a, as an example, you know, we, I would focus on a problem. A large proportion of rural infants and toddlers slip into various degrees of malnutrition after six months of age. Malnutrition is a word that the world likes to call unrequited hunger as. Actually, it's, it's a sanitized word, malnutrition for hunger. 
the reason is that these kids after 6 months of age don't get enough food down their gullets because there is no one to feed them when both parents have to go out for work and anganwadis in our country only entertain children after 3 years of age so we decided to open day long creches full day long creches called phulwaris in our case in each hamlet in a village to be looked after by one caretaker for a maximum of 10 children even lesser than that would be case the case we ensured that kids got amounts and quality of food that all children should get including eggs each day and the result was dramatic kids ate more food than they had ever been offered so much that one mother gave us this supreme compliment tumne to hamare bachchon ke pet mein aag laga di hai you have applied you have ignited fire in our bellies of our children so we could you know we could save these kids from slipping into malnutrition or hunger as i would say and we could make a tangible impact on arguably the most insoluble of public health problems early childhood malnutrition this solution has been now taken up by other co travelers uh, in health in diverse geographies such as odisha madhya pradesh and jharkhand helping kids everywhere surely this was a determinant of poor health care poor health that we could fix by you know organizing this supplementary nutrition program as also some others like ensuring safe drinking water using appropriate disinfection methods at a household level or ensuring insecticide treated bed nets and other raging vector borne diseases but we realized that many other determinants were not so easily fixed for example care for several chronic illnesses such as diabetes women's health problems cancers injuries kidney disorders often cause catastrophic ex- ex- medical expenditure which push the entire families into medical poverty or into not seeking health care and abandoning care absolutely we also know that 70% of all health care expenditure is on drugs drugs may be cheaper in india as they are than many other countries but they are still unaffordable for the majority in our country so we as a medical group filed a pil a public interest litigation in the supreme court of india arguing that all essential drugs should be under price control so that they become affordable for everyone we filed this petition petition in 2003 and 14 years later the verdict came in the favor of the common people with all essential drugs now being under price control so health professionals like us besides peddling pills and doing surgeries or ensuring food for our children took to the legal route to work on a healthcare issue yet i believe that the challenges that we the people in our country face are far more i'm talking about health problems are far more than we started in 1990s with let me tell you some of them first there is this pervasive lack of hope and trust in the public systems that i see and an expectation that privatization can fix the problem the lack of access and quality of health care and education nothing can be further from the truth any amount of further privatization than we already are in or private public partnerships called ppps whether of health services of or drugs drugs and diagnostics industry or of medical education will hurt the interest of the poor no country or community in the world has ever been able to provide health care to all its people through privatization this dismantling of public institutions which is happening public hospitals educational institutions regulatory bodies as well as our data management systems is so worrying second the enabling environment for starting any community based organizations or non profit work on these works are so critical for filling the gaps in care provision have been dismantled as we have been seeing over the last few years even if a physician wants to work independently in the private system this is difficult due to corporatization of healthcare third i find a similar irrational trust among many of us including our policy makers that technology particularly especially uh, uh, information technology can fix the raging poverty and inequity among us there are hopes that with telemedicine alone we can fill the gaps to access of healthcare technology can at best be an aid but to expect it to fix structural issues is a myth so i come to the question what should a young doctor do my young good doctor could do work at three levels type 1 is who is skilled to look after a sick individual cutting across specialties something like a multi dimensional artist like kishor kumar type of physician and not a single acting skill like karina kapoor he or she asks the right questions to the sick person 
in need of care, perform the right examination, then prescribes a minimum amount of investigations. And when the results come, she makes an analysis of the diagnosis and decides on a rational plan. She would then offer treatment, whether of drugs or surgery or the right counsel, and then train any associates or nurse, uh, trainees who are there with her or him. In as much as a community is a collection of individuals, this doctor is doing good public health work. My type 1.0 doctor. Like my looking after the young man with bad tuberculosis and severe undernutrition. The type 2.0 doctor goes beyond an individual and looks at the causes and determinants of illnesses. Whether it is the quality of drinking water, if there is much diarrhea in the community, or planning nutritional supplementation programs where malnutrition is a big problem, or investigate for fluoride ex excess in drinking water if one sees many kids with discolored teeth in a cluster of villages, or many adults with backache and disability. We also do much type 2.0 work. As I alluded to earlier, addressing structural issues in health, some of them policy level or political decisions are also within the doctor's scope of work. My doctor 3.0. Speaking up for price control of drugs or for universal health care or speaking against the privatization of district hospitals as is happening are type 3.0 activities. So these three types of work are both a continuum as well as can be done together by the same person according to one's interest, according to one's commitment and preparedness. So you might ask me what, what type of doctor am I? I call myself Dr. 2.5 moving towards 3.0, but with some trepidation. I must confess that I find a lack of hope and in fact a lack of dreams among the young uh, that many of us are. That the, the, the fact that you know, there can be a more just world where all humans are equal, is you know, it's e even such a world is even possible or not. Perhaps the trend of breakdown of community feelings or the fear that if one's experimentation failed, we would fall far behind. I'm aware that it is far more difficult to be young these days than it was for us 25 years ago. I would invoke the wonderful Punjabi poet Pash, you might have heard, who said, Sabse khatarnak hota hai sapno ka mar jana. The most dangerous thing is to, when, when you stop, when dreams die. I would urge all young people, especially the health professionals, to dream, to get out of your comfort holes and spend at least one year out of, among the people and in the larger world and then take your decision about your professional lives. There is so much to do that can be satisfying if one chooses to be anyone from Dr. 0.5 to Dr. 3.0. It is in the praxis, in practicing what you have, what you think about and not in mental debates or doubts or in writing that I find courage for the present and hope for the future, which is why I make this suggestion to all of us. There is a need to even resist small injustices in healthcare and believe me, it is only in small battles you win, hope and motivation can remain alive. Or as Dumbledore said in Harry Potter's Chamber of Secrets, no? it is not in our abilities that our true self show up. It is in our choices we make. I made mine and I urge you to make yours. And once you make your choices, just do it. You will succeed, period. Finally, the biggest gift that you can make by making your choices to the world is that of kindling hope which is a rare fading commodity in these dark days in our country, where the Tana Bana, the warp and the woof of the society is being torn. Did not Dushant Kumar remind us, Kaun kehta hai ki asma mein surak nahi ho sakta hai? Ek pathar to tabiyat se uchhalo yaro. Who says you can't, have a, you can't puncture a hole in the sky, just you need to throw a stone up with some passion. Thank you.